Past the entrance island, and opened out into the Great Lagoon. The wind was steady from the east, offering itself for the takeoff. The moon was drawing the ocean to the time of high water, and the swell was coming in over the reef. I sat and watched the swell as we ran through the pre-flight checks. Then I let her come round and up to the wind. She faced the lagoon for a moment of contemplation. And then I gave her full power. The swell was there, but harmless. She protested a little, but it was only to let me know her mood. A slight backward pressure on the control column restored her equilibrium and suggested a way of escape to the air. She responded with confidence and soon was running light and true upon the surface. A touch of the tail trim, and I broke her away when she was ready.
I knew that at any minute of the day, many people in many cities of the world were thinking of escape to an island, most likely a Pacific island. The regular travel services would take these people to a few commercial or trading centres in the islands, with perhaps an attractive bungalow hotel thrown in on the edge of the transplanted European life. They'd be processed through a number of tourist attractions and shipped back home from a quite enjoyable experience. But these people would never know the islands, nor taste the sweet honey of their lives. Even yachts couldn't gain access to the havens of many lagoons, which have no navigable passage to the sea. Only the flying boat could sail freely to the islands, alight and lie indefinitely in the lagoons. Such as comfort, its versatility and economy of base facilities, you may well wonder why the flying boat is not used today on the international airlines, and perhaps whether it'll ever come back into use for regular air transport services. The flying boat was replaced because of its relatively slow speed and costly performance as a flying machine. This condition was imposed on it mainly by the need for propeller clearance over the water, which in turn dictated a huge, deep hull which cost power and money to drive through the air though it had great advantages in space and comfort for passengers. The flying boat, after the war, was an order. The flying boat will never come back. Not on the international airlines. It will be used for certain specialised military purposes, which can be fulfilled only by a water-based aircraft. But it will never be given a chance to raise its head above the surface with this gigantic world investment in land airports standing over it. <laughs> 